All right, so let's get into your background some. Okay, well, where, were you, where were you raised? So I was raised on the south shore of Long Island in a town called Woodmere. And so my parents are New Yorkers, born and raised. My mom from the Bronx, my dad from Brooklyn. And um, they have a really cool story because they're both, my father, I tragically lost four years ago. And I think about him every day. I actually lost him right when I started MacGyver. I don't know if you remember that. No, I remember It was that. like my second episode. Maybe it was my third episode. Ironically, it was an episode all about loss. And so that was tough. But anyway, um, my dad was born with cerebral palsy. And my mom is a little person. And they had a lot of struggles growing up, but they rose to the top. My dad was an administrative law judge. My mom, a very prominent psychoanalyst. And at the time when they were growing up in the 1950s, they were segregated in a segregated school because people with disabilities during that time were not permitted to enter mainstream school. And so they grew up during that time and then the Civil Rights Act and a lot of changes came about and they um, always had the notion that there's nothing in the world that they couldn't accomplish. Both extremely academic people. My dad eventually graduated from New York Law School, the top of his class. My mom was valedictorian at NYU. Wow. And so by the time they met, they were, they were really accomplished in their own rights. And so growing up, I always was taught the sky's the limit. There's absolutely nothing that you can't do unless you don't want to do it. Right. And so um, <clears throat> I moved to Long Island when um, I was three and went to school and did all the typical things that everybody does and had a great group of friends, a uh, boyfriend, no, mm -hmm. nothing nothing atypical at all. Hmm. Well, I was going to ask you about that. How was it? This is what I wanted to ask you. When did you first understand the concept that you were a little person? Was that ever a thought? Like, did someone have to tell you? Or could you, uh, like, you know. So <laughs> Somebody had to tell mom, me I was black. My mom, my mom was like, boy, you're black. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm listening. No, it's a great question. So my mom, you know, is a little person. But growing up not really being around other little people this was just my life my norm you know my friends were not little people i wasn't treated any differently i was just to them mary because that's what everyone in, in on long island would call me is mary and so but i remember very vividly coming home from first grade and um this boy who really had it out for me punched me in the gut in first grade and called me a midget. Oh, wow. And I never heard that word before. And so I came home and had dinner with my parents as we did every night. And I said to my dad, you know, this boy punched me in the gut today. And immediately my dad was like, say what? I said, wow. and he called me a midget. What does that mean? And it was like record scratch because We'd never covered that before. Mm. And, and how old were you doing? I was in first grade. So first I was grade, about six. six. And so, and that's when, that's when kids noticed that I wasn't growing at the same rate. Because before that, it's pretty even playing field. Right. Nobody could really tell that I was a little person until I fell off the growth chart. And that started happening around the age of six when I stayed where I was and everybody else was creeping up. Mm. And so... My dad <clears throat> explained to me that the word midget is a, uh, a mean word, uh, a labeling word, an inappropriate word, and a word that was used to demean little people. And that most of the time that word comes out of ignorance, not knowing. Mm -hmm. And that I was going to hear that word throughout my life and that I was going to have to learn to to cope with that word to defend that word and to you know to know that that word was not it wasn't going to be the last time i was going to hear that word 
So that was the first time that I ever realized that there was a difference was when I was made aware by this kid who continued all throughout elementary school and even in high school to, to bully me. I mean, look, I still deal with bullies. You know, now they're just adults. Right. But, you know, <laughs> That's right. Right. But I think that it, dealing with people that are unkind, who don't know, or who um, for some reason choose to target other people, that was where my interest in psychology began. Because mm, okay. I started to wonder, what's going on in that person's life? What's going on in that person's mind where they feel that they need to make someone else feel less than? And so I started to dissect that and it helped me to gain a higher understanding of other people's psychology. And I do credit that a lot for what made me get into psychology at one point in my life. Sweet. 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 Sweet.